ever feel like you are living in two different worlds? Uh, for me, I feel like I am definitely, there's the one world, which is the world of uh, out in public. You know, friends, schools, sports, that kind of stuff. And the other world is your home world. And I don't know about you, but those feel like very different places to me. An example would be, is that I'm way weirder at home than I am out in public. Uh, simple example. I don't know why, but when I get home from work, I got about 10 steps into my house before my collar feels like it's choking me. It's not reasonable, I get that, but 10 steps in, the work shirt's gotta go. And 10 steps in is also where the back of my couch happens to be. And so, uh, 10 steps in, uh, work shirt comes off, uh, dress shoes, dress socks, belt, just boom, right there on the back of the couch. Now you might be wondering, Marcus, why don't you just take what's probably only about 20 more steps to the closet where your clothes are supposed to go? And to that, I would say, you sound a lot like my wife. It's a reasonable question. I didn't say this was normal. I said this was me being weird. I don't know why, but 10 steps is my limit. Now, you shouldn't judge me, though, because each of us have these kinds of weird, quirky things at home. Each of us do things at home we wouldn't be caught dead doing in public, but that's not only weird stuff. We could also say that we're probably a little bit more, let's call it um, difficult at home. As an example, none of you would leave your stinky socks in the living room floor of your girlfriend's house, but your stinky socks are probably all over your house right now. None of you would ever talk to your coach the way that you talk to your stepmom. None of you would ever treat a partner in a class project the way that you treat your little brother. You see, the truth is, is that we do sometimes live in two different worlds. And that's not that we're just a little bit weirder at home. We're also a little bit more difficult at home. And the bottom line is, is that if many of us acted the way that we act at home, but act that out, acted that way out in public, we wouldn't have any friends. You certainly wouldn't have any dates. And some of y'all right now, you hear this and you're nodding along with me and you're going, yeah, it definitely do be like that. But why is it be like that? That's the question. Why do we live two different lives at home and out in public? I think there's a lot of things that build into that. I think there's a lot of different reasons. But I think one of the main reasons is, is that home is like our place. And because it's our place, sometimes it feels like we should have influence over what happens in our homes. It feels like that's where if we're going to have control, it should be in our own homes. And so it's in our homes that it's way more natural to ask the question, how does this affect me? Look, I, I'll run through the examples, okay? Uh, you walk into your house and you smell dinner cooking. How does this affect me? Well, the first thing you're gonna wonder is whether or not you like what's cooking. Again, you would never be at a friend's house and be like, ugh, lasagna? Woman, your lasagna tastes like feet. But you sure as sugar will complain to your mom about her cooking. Or another version, uh, your parents tell you that they need you to babysit. Well, how does this affect me? Well, the way it affects me is now you don't get to go out with your friends anymore. And so you don't care why your parents are asking you to babysit. You just think that it's unfair. And therefore, you're going to give your parents two barrels worth of attitude. Or uh, another one. Um, let's say you studied relatively hard for a test while your sister scrolled TikTok like all night long. And then the next day, she aces the test and you barely pass. How does this affect you? Well, you don't believe that your sister deserves that grade, and so you're annoyed, and you're going to make sure she feels your annoyance, right? But here's the problem. The problem comes down to is that in all these kinds of situations, while they're very natural, all of us know that our house has a vibe. Our house has a temperature. Our house has a feeling. And sometimes when our house, the feeling is that heavy, tense air in our house, that vibe what a lot of us don't realize is that our asking, how does this affect me, affects the people around us. Now, I've told you that the idea behind this series is we're going to look at the life of a man named Joseph. And the reason we're doing that is because all of us have 
plans, shiny, beautiful hopes, dreams, and aspirations. And yet all of us are going to experience those plans, plans getting broken by life. Not all of them, but enough. And when that happens, when you're standing amongst the pieces, we're not going to know what to do. And so we're looking at the life of Joseph to try to help us know what to do when we don't know what to do. Now, you're probably wondering, what does family drama and family conflict and that whole intro you gave, Marcus, have to do with what to do when you don't know what to do? Well, in Joseph's story, his plans turned into this because of family conflict. Now, Joseph's family was set up for conflict, all right? I mean, uh, he had, um, for, to start off with, uh, his family consisted of one dad, four moms, and 12, 12, 12 brothers, all right? A lot of brothers, okay? So it was set up as a complicated family. Some of you, you got a complicated stepfather, stepmother, stepsibling kind of situation, but I think you would agree that Joseph's life was pretty crazy, but to make matters even more complicated, Joseph was his dad's favorite son. And look, many of you suspect that either you're the favorite or one of your siblings are, um, but Joseph's dad wasn't keeping it a secret at all, wasn't even trying to. In fact, Joseph's dad gave Joseph uh, a coat, a multicolored, mini colored coat. And at the time, coats were like getting a brand new pair of Jordans or Yeezys, or whatever relevant reference I should be making right now. I don't know, but the bottom line is, is not only was the coat legit, but it was also like bedazzled, all right? It was fancy. It was like his dad got him a brand new truck and had it lifted, all right? And you can imagine how his brothers would have felt about that. And to make matters worse, though, Joseph had a dream and he decided to actually share that dream with his brothers. That doesn't sound like a problem until you hear what the dream was. This is recorded for us in the book of Genesis, specifically Genesis 37. This is Joseph telling his brothers what his dream was. He said, listen to this dream. We were out in the field tying up bundles of grain. And suddenly my bundle stood up and your bundles, bundles all gathered around and bowed down low to mine. <laughs> you can imagine Joseph saying this, right? I, I mean, he's, you know, he's like telling the story and then he's like, oh, and by the way, did I tell you I have a stain on my brand new awesome coat? You know, the good thing about your old ugly coats is that you can never tell if there's any stains on them. Anyway, bye. You know, it's like completely oblivious. But of course, we can see this automatically. This dream was not just a dream. It was a dream about power. And this is a younger brother a younger stepbrother telling all of his older brothers that one day he was going to be in charge. He was going to have all the power in the relationship. How do you think that went over? The next verse says, his brothers responded. So you think you will be our king, do you? <laughs> do you actually think you will reign over us? And they hated him all the more because of his dreams and the way that he talked about him. <clears throat> Can you imagine <clears throat> what the dinner table must have been like in Joseph's family? Joseph sitting at the table with that fancy coat, talking about these dreams that he's having about ruling over his family one day. Can you imagine the tension in that room? I mean, we can look at this, and one of our first reactions is just, how could Joseph be so stupid? Like, why would he do something like that? But the, the issue with that viewpoint of Joseph is the fact that many of us do very similar things. This is one of those things that's really easy to see in the behavior of another person and their poor choices and really hard to see in the mirror. But what Joseph is doing is really common to many of us because ultimately what Joseph, Joseph is doing is he's super aware of how he's being treated and virtually oblivious, totally unaware of how it affects the people around him. And that is not something unique to Joseph. That's something we all do. Look, you can go through the whole story of Joseph. And the bottom line is, is that Joseph is not the kind of guy that would try to twist the knife with his brothers. He's not rubbing it in on purpose. 
What's going on is the fact that Joseph, Joseph doesn't even realize how his behavior is affecting the people around him. And that, while unwise on Joseph's part, is something super common to all of us. And so you can understand why his brothers would start to get frustrated, start to get angry. And situations like that, while they can start off small, they can build into bigger problems. And we're going to see next week how this situation will develop into a biblical dumpster fire kind of situation, all right? But that's next week. This week, we're going to stay right here on this part of Joseph's story. Because this part of Joseph's story and the, the family drama that he's experiencing is not all that different from the kind of family drama that we experience. Because some of the people listening to me right now, you are the favorite. You're the favorite and everybody knows it. For some of you, you're, you're, you're the quiet one. Or maybe you're the loud one, or maybe you're the smart one, or maybe you're the sporty one, or maybe you're the baby of the family and get treated that way, or maybe you're the oldest in the family and get treated that way. Maybe you're the one in your family that deserves a gold medal and door slamming. But each of you, each of us, plays a role in our family. And the role that you play in your family is either making the vibe and the temperature and the, and the experience of your family. You're either making it better or you're making it worse. And step one in figuring out which one you are is to get to the place where you are paying attention to how you affect your family. Look, each of you is playing a role. Each of you is having an effect on your family right now. And the first step before you can decide you want to play a different role or you want to be more intentional about lifting the vibe of your family versus hurting the vibe of your family, the first step is to just start paying attention. Start even paying attention to how your behavior, how your actions, how your words affect the people around you in your family. To be the kind of person that stops asking, how does this affect me? And begins asking, how do I affect others? This is how it was always meant to be. I want to read to you something that's recorded for us in Philippians 2. This is what we're told to do. It says, be humble, <laughs> thinking of others as better than yourselves. Don't look out for only your own interests but take an, interest, take an interest in others too. And the author of that passage, he goes on to tell us why. He says, you must have the same attitude that Christ Jesus had. Though he was God, he did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges. He took the humble position of a slave and was born as a human being. And when he appeared in human form, he humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on the cross. The guy that wrote this, his, his name is Paul. And Paul's point is that if anyone could ever walk into a room, look around and ask the question, how does all of this affect me? It would be Jesus because Jesus is God. And we sometimes feel at home that, that we want to have more influence, more control over a certain situation. But Jesus owned everything. It is all his. If anyone ever had a right to walk in and say, how does this affect me? And snap his fingers and say, everybody, everybody make your lives revolve around me. If anybody had a right to do it, it was Jesus. But instead, he humbled himself. He put the interests of others above his own. He put our interests above his own. And he chose to come and take care of our greatest needs, which was the need to be saved from the consequences of our sin. And so he humbled himself in obedience, even to the point of dying on a cross, took that punishment for us so that we could be free. And now, in response to that, followers of Jesus we need to consider how to serve others, not how they should serve us. We need to consider how to put others first and not how they ought to be putting us first. We need to stop asking, how does this affect me? And start asking, how do I affect others? And that should start with our families.
I'm going to pray and ask that God gives you the strength to do it. Father, home is just different, God. It's difficult. It's difficult to give full effort at home for some reason. It's difficult to think of others at home. On, on the one hand, you, we would think that that would be the easiest place to do it. And on, other, on the other hand, it's just, it's just obvious that there's parts of being at home that actually make it more difficult to treat people the way that we would want to be treated, to serve people and put them above our, ourselves. And yet, God, and yet they are some of the first people that we're supposed to serve and supposed to love. And so I ask, I ask uh, on behalf of the middle schoolers and high schoolers that are listening to this right now, that you would help us pay attention to how we affect our family, that we wouldn't be oblivious anymore, that we would see how our actions and our words affect our parents and our siblings. We would pay attention to that and we would see the role that we play in our family and then we would take seriously Paul's calling to us to put their interests above our own, to follow after the example of Jesus. And God, may we see that help our family. May we see that encourage them. May we see that improve, improve that vibe, improve that feeling. May it bring more joy and more strength to our home so that our home can be a place of, of power and rest and joy and everything that it should be. May we take seriously our role in making that happen. And may we look to Jesus as our example. We ask for this to be answered in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right. Well, where you are right now, some of you are watching this alone. Some of you are watching this with other students. Uh, some of you are watching this at one of our campuses. And some of you are watching this with a family member. I want to set up a conversation for you right now. Just some recommended questions that you talk about right now so that you can take what you've just heard and actually turn it into something in your life. And so here's the first question that I recommend. Just, just think and talk about, hey, what's one weird thing that you only do at home? I went first, all right? I was vulnerable, your turn, okay? All right, second one would be this. What role do you fill in your house? Some examples. Are you the loud one? Are you the quiet one, the baby? Are you like the mini parent? You like to take charge of your siblings? Are you the angry one? Are you something or someone else? What role do you think you play in your family? And bonus points, if you're with family members right now, be humble enough to ask them to answer that question for you. See if that matches up. Here's the last question I recommend. What is the one thing that you do that you know affects your family negatively? And how can you take a step to change that this week? Hey guys, thanks for joining us for another one of these online messages. We love you. And man, we look forward to continuing to talk about the things in Joseph's life, including next week where we see how his life is gonna turn into a dumpster fire and what encouragement we can ultimately take from that as well. See you then.